Shout out to all the Canalitas out there. We're going to troll you clowns just a little bit because, well, it's fun and you deserve it. So, again, for all of you Canalitas out there who, at the slightest hint of criticism of Canelo, however deserved, reach deep into your, I don't know, reservoir of bullshit excuses and call people haters, you guys let me know. What would you say if Golovkin failed to drug this, stack his raps, and his best performance was Amir Khan? What would you say? Oh, oh but yeah, let me, let me hear all about Kelbrook, right? As if the reason that Triple G fought Kell Brook wasn't the fact that Chris Eubank Jr. lost his pen, right? As if the reason why Canelo fought Khan was because Canelo, who was supposed to fight Golovkin instead of Khan, lost his pen. As if, as if the fact that Golovkin was even fishing for a fight in the UK wasn't the fact that Canelo was ducking and dodging and avoiding him. Yeah, let's let's all rewrite history. Just the same way you, to this day, are saying that Golovkin lost. He lost the first fight to Canelo somehow when officially it was a draw. And everybody in their mama who knows anything about boxing knows he won that fight. And he won the newspaper decision, right? Officially it was a draw. The second fight was officially a Canelo win, but in both of those fights, Triple G won the newspaper decision. Deal with it. How about how about this one, guys? How about Canelo, who was too as small to fight Golovkin at what was it, middleweight? Yeah. Just a few months ago, not that long ago, was in a conversation with. Tyson Fury, as if he ever had a chance, right? He was going to destroy Makabu, right? Beterbiev, ah, we're looking past Beterbiev. Go after Makabu, right? Beat Usyk, who just beat AJ. He could actually compete with Tyson Fury, right? A guy that five years prior was too small for middleweight, right? I mean... You guys are fucking embarrassing. Anyway... Give the video a like. All of you canalitas, hit that butt hurt button. Yeah. Rate, comment, sub. Check out my Patreon. Anyway, let's look at some of these photos from the fight. This is this is gonna be uh, my tentative prediction. Look, I've been going back and forth in my head about this fight. Uh, you know, it, it's it's a difficult fight in my opinion, to pick all these people saying that, you know, Canelo just runs through Triple G, stops him early, and all this other... Look, it could happen. It's boxing. Anything could happen. But how likely is that, right? Um, This idea that Canelo's just going to run through him, right? Now, for the viewers of this channel, you know how I feel about the Bevo fight, but... For all of you who think that shit was real. <laughs> I mean, Canelo is coming off an ass whooping, right? Against Bebo, who never really beat anybody, right? He's a good fighter, don't get me wrong. But, I mean, who has he beaten? Callum Smith performed better against uh, Castillo, right? Than Bebo did, who struggled with Castillo. Right? Anyway, you know, and Golovkin just had a very impressive performance unifying the middleweight division once again on the road, right? Adding to his uh, Guinness Book of World Records record of middleweight defenses. Um, right? He somehow looked horrible, right? And Canelo, who barely won a round against Bevo, looked like shit, right? He's going to destroy Golovkin? Like, what, what are we talking about here? Where, where do you get these ideas from? It's like you don't actually believe that what you saw in that ring on that night, Canelo Bivo, was a real fight. I mean, cognitive dissonance is 
Wow, it's all there, isn't it? Anyway, look, I'm not going to go too deep into breaking this fight down, at least not in this video, but something occurred to me as I've been thinking about this fight. So in the first fight, Canelo was basically shocked, you could say, right? He tried to stand with Golovkin, but, and he did a little bit, but realized that he couldn't really, right? He just wasn't willing to do it for whatever reason. So he started moving a lot and, you know, fighting on the move, boxing on the move, counterpunching on the move, doing his best while retreating, right? Giving up ground, moving away. Triple G was the ring general, right? Yes, Dougie Fisher, he was the ring general. In the second fight... Oh, that smack talk by Sanchez, right? I think backfired a little bit. Canelo got into his feelings because, well, he's a simple man. And he's very few. He um, stood his ground. And I think that surprised Golovkin. And Sanchez, who was rah, 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 Mexican style and has a big ego, instead of adjusting, adapting the game plan, coming to the fight with a couple of different game plans, maybe three, right? Was yelling at Golovkin, telling him to, you know, go to war with this guy, push him back, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, it worked, right? But it was a much closer fight. And it surprised Golovkin, I think. I think it surprised him. He he didn't expect that much resistance from Canelo. He he didn't experience it in the sparring that they had, probably, and definitely not in that first fight. So when Canelo stood his ground, right, nice and juicy, and was countering Golovkin and, and fighting really well and pushing him back in spots, right, Triple G went into uh, stick and move mode, right? Something that he did very successfully against Lemia. But, you know, this is a few years later. He's no longer in his prime. And Canelo's better than Lemia. So, to me, it seemed like he didn't really prepare to do that, right? He thought it was going to be much like the first fight, right? So, whereas the um, element of surprise and maybe a little bit of shock was with Canelo in the first fight. Or with Triple G on Triple G's side, it was kind of reversed in the second fight, right? And now, it would seem to me, now that Golovkin has Banks with him, who is not Mexican style, right? And has been, well, sticking and moving a lot more, right? Fighting while going backwards, counterpunching, uh, letting his combinations flow a little bit more, not just committing to every single punch, right? Picking his punches better, um, fighting more like the old Triple G. And, well, fighting like the old Triple G, really, but fighting like the very aggressive big puncher Triple G, yeah? And also a Triple G that fights while retreating in the same fight, right? Now, there was a fight where he put both of those together against Lemieux, right? But other than that, it's been all coming forward for Triple G, you know, in, in, in many of his fights and maybe here and there backing up a little bit. But it seems to me that he would really concentrate on doing one or the other, right? Whereas now he seems to be... Yeah, he slowed down physically. So has Canelo. Uh, but he seems to be doing um, both and mixing it up a little bit more insofar as his strategy is concerned, insofar as the tactic of, you know... Am I coming forward now or am I backing away? So when people see Triple G backing up, this is why they they think he's losing, right? Because, well, commentators are brainwashing them to think so. And because he's trying new things, right? Or things that he didn't do as much in the past. And he's blending, uh, going backwards, right? 
letting the other guy punch himself out, maybe counter-punching him in spots with just coming forward like the destroyer, right? He mixes those two approaches, and it flows a lot better than before, right? And this time around, because, you know, it worked for Canelo to come forward, and he's definitely in his feelings, and Triple G is stoking that fire, right? Mind gaming Canelo. I think Canelo is going to come out and push Triple G back, except Triple G is going to be ready for that, right? Because the experience, it's not, it's not going to surprise him like in the first fight, right? So he's getting ready for that kind of a confrontation, right? And polishing, sharpening those two to implement that kind of a game plan, right? At least early. Letting Canelo come after him, swinging big punches, hitting nothing but air, getting into his feelings, you know what I mean? Maybe getting to Triple G here and there, never putting him on the ropes, right? Because Triple G has the superior footwork, so on and so forth. Letting Canelo punch himself out and then going on the offensive later on in the fight once Canelo is, you know, a little bit gassed and, and all that youthful enthusiasm leaves him as it tends to later on in the fight. So, yeah, Triple G had the element of surprise in the first, Canelo had it in the second, and now when Triple G had the element of surprise, it was a mismatch, right? It was competitive, don't get me wrong, but insofar as rounds scored one, it was a mismatch. When Canelo had the element of surprise, right, it was 50-50. The fight should have been a draw, right? But now both of them are going to be ready, right? Well, Glovkin's going to be ready. For Canelo, it's just going to be, you know, round 25, right? And I think for Triple G, this is going to be a whole new, different thing. So I see a very close fight. I'm not worried about the judges. I'm not predicting what the judges are going to see, right? But I think, in my view, Triple G is going to win seven rounds. I don't think anybody gets knocked out. I don't think anybody gets knocked down. Um, someone will probably get hurt but won't really show it. I think it's going to be very much like the second fight with the element of surprise not really being there for Canelo anymore, which will... Um, push Triple G's success a little bit more over the edge where it's no longer a 7-5 could have gone either way 6-6 six, six type of a fight. It's going to be a convincing 7-5 for Triple G. And to all of you who don't think Triple G's coming to win, I mean, you could be right, but I made a case for why he is on Patreon. And I think he will. Again, whatever the judges decide to do, uh, I mean, I ain't worried about that. At any rate, boxing has gotten um, a little bit too predictable. And there wasn't enough money, in my opinion, for the gambling industry to get over on people because well the fights just got so predictable. It didn't matter, the skill, whatever, blah, blah, blah. A would always beat B or a lot more often than it should happen, right? Boxing became very, very predictable, which is why, and because a lot of us have caught on to the, well, sparring matches that they try to push off, push through as uh, real fights, uh, they kind of have to adjust. And um, I think you're going to see more a sites losing because the shit's just gotten a little bit too predictable. Which doesn't mean they don't protect Canelo in this fight, but it would not surprise me if they just rolled the dice and we actually got fair judging. Look at that low blow by Canelo. Come on, man. Really? What would the Canelitas say, right? What would they say if much of Triple G's success in the ring was, you know, Low-blowing motherfuckers. What would they say? Anyway, yeah, I'm picking Triple G75. Go cry about it.